Hello, my name is Walter Unglob, and this is The Physics of a Cartwheel. So here I have a diagram of a little man who's going to do a cartwheel, and I'm going to call this distance the radius, where I have a point on his chest all the way to the top of his head, and he's got to push off, uh, off the ground so that he can start this rolling motion of his body and then catch himself on the ground so that he can do a complete revolution. And the first thing we're gonna do is consider all the forces acting upon this man. So if we condense all of his mass to a single point, we have a free body diagram. And we have, of course, the force of gravity acting downward, which is going to be equal to his mass times the gravitational acceleration g. And to counteract that, we have the force of the ground acting on the man. This is the normal force, which is equal in magnitude to the gravitational force, since this is a flat surface. And next, we have the applied force due to the man pushing himself off in this direction so that he traverses in that direction. So we're going to call that F sub applied. And finally, if we'd like, we can also consider the force of air resistance. So I'll call that F sub air. Although this force will be negligible uh, if the man isn't in a very windy area. And if we add all of these forces together, we're going to end up with a net force, which is going to be equal to his mass times the net acceleration that he experiences. Now, we can also consider the kinetic energy that the man experiences during his cartwheel process. And the kinetic energy will have two parts to it. It's going to have a translational part and a rotational part to it. The translational part will be equal to the standard 1 half mv squared, where m is his mass and v is the velocity he experiences after pushing himself off the ground and we're going to have a rotational part, one half i omega squared, where i is his moment of inertia, the rotational inertia, and omega is the rotational velocity. So this velocity here from the translational part is going to be equal to his initial velocity, which we can assume to be zero if he starts just standing up in rest, plus the acceleration times time. And the acceleration will be this net force divided by his mass times time. So once he gets going and he has a velocity, if he doesn't need to apply any additional force, then this velocity will just become a constant and will not depend on time. The inertia for the rotational motion is proportional to his mass times this radius r squared. So the greater mass he has, the greater the rotational inertia. And these are all the basics you need to understand the physics of a cartwheel. All the forces acted upon the person doing the cartwheel and the kinetic energy. There is no potential energy because we're assuming that the cartwheeling is taking place on flat ground where the gravitational potential locally is zero. My name is Walter Unglob and this is The Physics of a Cartwheel.